Jason Lee Podcast. All right, welcome back for another Jason Lee Podcast. Uh, that's our version of the Wendy Williams Show audience. It doesn't exist anymore on TV. Everything you see is pretty much mediocre. Uh, you know, a lot has been going on over here. This is the Jason Lee Podcast for those of you that are just now downloading or figuring it out. And I see a lot of people online talking about, oh, they don't have hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. Shout out to the YouTube community. We are not YouTubers. Uh, we are streaming everywhere that podcasts stream. And just one clip I saw this morning on Facebook that was posted yesterday had like 127,000 views. So if you're like looking at numbers, you need to learn how to count beyond YouTube. Uh, we're a holistic brand that reaches all across the Grove. Hey, Grove, uh, Grove. Globe. Hey, Africa. No, I was at the Grove the other day. I haven't been to the Grove in so long because the Grove is where people, you know, you go if you're on a date or if you have a family. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not. You, I don't know what it's a lot of strolls. Right. You don't you date. Know you don't date. You just sleep over and you don't <laughs> and you don't have a family, at least not one that you know of. So, again, this oh is for God. a very specific audience. Um, hey, Emily. So e e either way, uh, welcome to the Jason Lee podcast. Make sure that you're downloading this everywhere. The podcast stream We're also, also over there on SoundCloud and the Jason Lee show that streams on Revolt or that airs on Revolt and on YouTube also airs early. For those of you that want to hear it on audio first every Monday. So make sure you're downloading it. So, look, it's been a crazy couple weeks. I've been very, 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 very busy, not just with the Hollywood Unlocked and Jason Lee experience, but I have a new show coming out that I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to find out before anybody else right here, and it's on Amazon through Amp Radio. I'm going to go ahead and clap it up there. Woo! Woo! And the show is called The Daily Drop with Jason Lee. And I always said that I wasn't going to be one of these people that went to Instagram to say what he thought every day because I'm not going to tell you what I think unless I'm getting paid. Shout out to Amazon because they had the bag and the bag has been secured. And now that the bag is secured, I will be coming to you live every day, Monday through Friday for an hour. And I will be talking my shit um, and telling you the tea with Jason Lee, but also fun segments like uh, um, the pull up where... You'll, oh, no, the drive-by, where fans will be able to pull up, and you can say whatever you want, and you can shoot the show up. Oh Anything God. you want to say, you can say it, and then also we'll have the unexpected guests where celebrities will pop in and have a good time. And we'll also have music that's going to be brought to you by the one and only DJ Damage, who's joining me back on the show. So I'm really excited for Ooh. Damage to be back. Hey, Damage. Hey. So that's for all of the uh, the fans of Hollywood Unlocked who miss me and Damage being together. You know, Damage was a loyal, loyal writer here for the Hollywood Unlocked uh, company, and so I'll be happy to be with him again. But outside of all things entertainment, I want to be real for a second because I've said to you on my social media, to whom much is given, much is required. And I've done a great job of, you know, working through my trauma, working through the trials of my life to get to a place where I can provide for others. And I really feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in a good space in my life to help people beyond the entertainment community and going back to helping the young Jasons and the Jasonas. Uh, the young black and brown girls uh, in my community, Stockton, California, and launching the Hollywood Cares Foundation. We pitched an initiative called the I Am Ready Initiative to Mayor Kevin Lincoln in Stockton. We've been doing a lot of work over the last year with my team to develop what this initiative would look like. And although it's going to start locally and hopefully come to L.A. and across the country, we're starting in Stockton. But as we expected, uh, we got caught with uh, some curveballs because in Stockton, there's a lot of political infighting. And those of you that have young kids at home who are trying to figure out how to help them tap into whatever their dreams are or get the education that you never had because you want them to live out their full lives uh, and be productive parts of their communities, this is something that would interest you because what we're finding is that the Jason Lees of the world that started somewhere have found their pathway, but there's a lot of kids who haven't. And uh, so I want to show you a little bit about what we've been doing in Stockton and have a real small conversation about it. Take a look. The last city council, everybody was supporting it. When I say if you vote no, you're saying that you're not ready to save the lives of Stockton and its youth. We came here in September. We pitched the idea of the I Am Ready initiative and the city, at the, the city at the time had a different city council, same mayor, a couple of new people. But everybody in the city wanted to change because, you know, kids were getting killed in the community. People don't want to come and do business here. It's a very unsafe space. And so we went and we did the work. And we knew that we were going to be met with opposition because there's infighting politically in the city. But nonetheless, we hear the people want it. And now we're going to go meet with a group of people to talk about the meeting tonight where they're gonna to vote to invest a million dollars into the I'm Ready initiative to show that the city's actually ready to support kids. 
And to me, if you vote no, that means you're just not ready to support kids. And that's that's a whole other issue. So. You know, part of me as an organizer wants to like use every relationship I have to do it, but I don't understand why it's so hard to help. You know, like right. I'm, I have fully made with her sign on to help. Like I can Tiffany had all these people, Adidas, Pepsi. And then even with all that, it's still like, you still got to force them to see the vision, you know? And I don't know, what are y'all doing? Like, yeah. Where are you going? Bella, what's your name? Just participate right now. The city council member who's one of the members trying to block. Since you can't block the blessing that God got in store for you, watch. We are going to move to public comments at this time. I'm here on the behalf, I'm ready. This project presented by Mr. Jason Lee will restore Stockton in so many ways. I sheltered my daughter. I she went to school every day, dropped off, picked up, and she was still murdered. Both of you guys told me, if you ever need anything, let me know. I am backing Jason on this. You guys ain't gonna make no change. I'm gonna do what I gotta do, and everybody gonna do what we gotta do, and we are gonna for sure make the change. When Jason spoke to the children earlier today, he sat with all of the children, and several of them don't even know what they wanna do when they grow up, and they're almost grown. I'm a friend of Jason's. He didn't even know I was coming. I was in North Carolina. I popped up on him just because of his Instagram. I'm a Afro-American pro race car driver. We need these kind of programs to get youth out there to understand a guy like me, can be a professional race car driver. My mom told me that mentorship changes lives and can change the way my future looks. I know, like knowing that my future can be happy and successful with Mr. Jason's program. Well, Harry go, because I had a meeting with Harry one time and he said he was going to support the youth. Y'all got a chance. Y'all ain't going to be up there forever. Y'all ain't going to hold them seats forever. One day y'all going to have to pass them on, but five years from now, if y'all approve this, Y'all can say I was a part of that. Now, I wasn't sure when I got here if I was ready or not. I wasn't. We are not going to fight this money. This million dollars needs to go, I think, to um, the I am ready. I am ready is a cry that our youth are saying, please, city council members, mayor, please, please say that you're ready. We got to either go or y'all got to go because somebody got to make a change. And we're ready to create change because these children, this, this youth in our city, they deserve this. They deserve to know that God has created them to live out their purpose. Take out the politics and stand for our youth. The I Am Ready initiative needs your support. So I hope you all support this initiative. I'm ready. Get ready. I am ready. Are you? My council colleagues for, for comments or questioning. It just doesn't seem fair to me that we would just let one organization, a new organization without, you know, really the track record to just jump over the process. A million dollars without going through the NOFA process when we're putting this other amount for all these various charities. I just don't feel right about that. I don't think it's being fair and competitive. I still really haven't seen a, a, a detailed budget. There's a two-year budget completed that has itemized expenses. The city staff did include that budget with the NOFA and all the supporting documents. What's happening right now is politics at play because the city manager and the mayor's office are on different pages. Why? Because the mayor is standing with kids in this community and the city manager is not. If, if, if I may, if I may, Mayor, I was going to provide some clarification which was very germane to this discussion. I'm the city manager, I have the right to do that. I understand that, yeah. but I'm facilitating this meeting right now, and we're at the portion of the meeting where the council members were, were asking questions. Okay, well, but I'll defer. If you, you talk about Rihanna, you talk about Mayweather, they're great friends with you. Why can they, have they ever done a, a, a fundraiser for you? Where's your background I mean, on this? Do you have a social, you know, social worker background? I mean, how are you gonna have people break this down helping you. I spent 11 years as a staff director with SEIU UHW organizing healthcare workers from radiology technologists to uh, certified nurse assistants to EVS workers and lab assistants. I then worked for a year with the California Nurse Association leading and organizing statewide and national campaigns and lobbying Congress. You talk about my past. I know there was a situation Let's, where, let's, let's, wait, no, no, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, no, we, we're not, I said, because I'm being respectful, this, okay, right here, right here, okay, 
we have a responsibility to the taxpayers. That's end of story. Um, there has to be a NOFA. There has to be a process. Um, there's power in this room right now today, but we're going to need you to bring that power together and, and deliver us a meaningful program design. I'm sorry that I'm getting emotional, but this is an emotional topic. We are talking about our youth in our city, our mayor, our community coming together for the first time to address the need of positive outlets for our youth. So I'm a little bit perplexed when seven months ago, we have this video up here by the council. If this is a process, an initiative, a movement that we can save some, I think that we owe it to ourselves, our young people, our community. And even my own opponent sitting in this own chair was praising you because he didn't have a mentor. Your mentorship thing is what's really getting to me because I didn't have a whole lot of mentorship as a kid. What's changed over the seven months? We need to invest in the health and safety of our children's need over politics. With you. This is not a moment of Superman flying in to save the city. This is an idea of how the city can invest and become a stakeholder in the process where we lead a program that works in collaboration with all these amazing people in the room. So maybe part of the backstory was that there was a lot of politics at play when it came down to where they were going to invest uh, the money. And so in an effort to try to spite me and not give us the money to launch our programming in partnership with them, they ended up getting so much pressure with hundreds of people showing up and showing a solidarity around the issue that they actually put another million dollars towards it. And now that money, over $2 million, will be uh, in play for community organizations to go forward and get the resources to help the kids. Now, here's what they're not showing you, right? This NOFA process, which we already have followed the documentation, is a very thorough process that communities and organizations of colors do not have accesses to resources to be able to create, which means that they won't be prepared to be eligible for the money. However, they will help their organizations that don't look like us, be prepared to get that money. So although there's $2 million, they'll figure out a way, they think they're gonna figure out a way to give it to their friends. The only thing is that one, we're not only gonna come back and go for the million dollar investment because we'll, we want them to put in a million and then we'll match a million. But we're also gonna make sure that we help the other organizations of color prepare their NOFA so that way they come in with us for the other 1.086. When you see the video, uh, yes, people of, well, you know, you're not of color, but. <laughs> You, you got a color, but it ain't ours. But anyway, as people of color in our communities, when we know, like, you've been shot, I've been shot. We have family members who have lost a lot of lives. You have friends who've lost lives. People, we've all seen some type of, you're from Chicago. Mm -hmm. One yeah. of the cities that has a lot of challenges is, and people will look at Chicago and say, oh, these black people kill each other. Well, there's lack of opportunity, lack of resources, and you're not really funding things that help people move forward and be productive. When you see that play out and you see the switch seven months or five months, whatever, in between, what do you think? I feel like ever since I've always been trying to help like lower income communities at the Steve Harvey show and Kelly Clarkson, we would talk to a lot of people doing great things, helping kids, helping older folks all over the community. And they would always say, we asked for funding from our governments and our local electives and nobody would help us. And so it's sad that they look for a talk show for like $25,000, $50,000. Like it's really sad. And we would like try to help them with it. But Looking at this breaks my heart too because I know that you were so excited about it. You had shirts made for everybody. Everybody pulled up, but it just shows you like them. It was wild them asking you like, why don't you get Rihanna or Floyd to pay well, for it? Well, we also cut out. They said, why don't you have Kanye pay for it? Ooh. I mean, they had done their research to see who we know. And right. I, I really feel like it, but what we didn't put in the video, shout out to Johnny who did a great job cutting it, was Ew. there were people that got him and said, nah, it is not their responsibility to pay for it. It's right. not Rihanna's job. It's not Jason's job. It's our community. We need to invest in the youth. And the money that we're talking about, to be very clear, is discretionary funding, which means they had the discretion to apply the money to that. And since that night, another 13-year-old was murdered um, at the hands of his 16-year-old brother uh, accidentally right before Mother's Day. And so, again, when kids don't have uh, spaces to channel 
their energy or have things to tap into that can help them unlock their dreams or actually create their own pathway to fulfilling their purpose. This is what happens. In Stockton, mm -hmm. you know, with, there's not enough time in the show to go through all the things that the community has gone through. But to have over 300 people of color show up in solidarity, get up there and speak. They We took over the whole city council meeting about it. Um, I'm just going to be committed to using my platform to continue to talk about it. But the thing that really I think is sticking with me is that this is one example of how black lives don't matter. And I've been dealing with it all week. It hasn't just been with this. It's been with talking to brands about how much money they're not spending with black media. It's talking to celebrities about their validation for mainstream or white and not understanding the importance of investing in black. It's talking to the White House about how they're going to come and pander to the poor and want the black vote at election time, but yet won't pull up to be accountable, accountable to the culture. So it's those things that I think continue to just fester in my mind where I just don't understand why as a people we can't get together. But I can tell you I'm ready. And as you can see, the work in Stockton is ready. And I've reached out to Mayor Bass. Um, ironically, I'd been emailing her team and they hadn't responded since we helped her get elected. So I DM'd her, complaining about her staff, and her staff read it and texted me and said, why are you snitching? Because I'm going to do what it takes to get your attention. And it's better than doing this publicly. Because once I do this, then it then that, that creates a whole other energy. And so what I am doing is clearly showing you that one, beyond entertainment, I want me and you, my audience, to get very invested in what's happening around issues that involve us, but also issues related to who we vote for and how we hold them accountable, right? Because you can't sit up at the White House, you can't be on the top of the hill, literally at the hill, and not focus on the issues that matter at the bottom of the hill. Because the bottom is where the power is. Power bottom, I know that don't sound right, but you know what I mean? It's still the Jason Lee podcast. All right. Well, listen, um, not to be messy there. Uh, oh, and shout out to everybody in Stockton who showed up and the team, my friends Noah and and, uh, and uh, Blake, who went with me and, and Rico had to drive 24 hours there and back and security and everybody who went, Million Shannon, because it is a team that's working on this. And, and you know, shout out to all the local leaders who are organizing, because I'm going to tell you, those games y'all played in front of them cameras, what you didn't know was that it was going to just get the people excited about uh, uniting. And I'm actually thinking for the first time of running for city office because... <laughs> Period. You, I, you should. I see the impact. I see the I just see the see party the after you get elected. <laughs> oh, the party's going to be lit. But no, seriously, I'm actually thinking of buying a house in Stockton because with my job, my studio, I'm 45 minutes away mm -hmm. from work. I can, my work, I can work remote anywhere I want. I'm not on while and out anymore. And even if I was, that's only, you know, whatever. But I'm actually thinking of going back to Stockton and running for city politics. Why not? It's a four-year commitment. I'd still be young. I can fly around and do what I need to do. Period. All right. So, and, and I'm going to tell you, this is how crazy y'all got to be careful when you hate on people. One, you tried to stop it and you got forced to double the amount of money being asked to help. That's number one. Two. Now you potentially have Jason Lee running for city office. That city council meeting will be with love and hip hop every time. Because the difference between what you saw and what you will see if I was there is I'm going to call cap right in the middle of the meeting. I'm not going to sit there in solidarity with the bullshit. <laughs> I'm going to stand with the people. And when y'all get to acting crazy, I'm going to leave the bench and go sit with the people like this. <laughs> no, the hell y'all not. And then when it's time to vote, I'm going to vote with the people because that's what people elect people to do. But it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a really wild thing that when people who say, vote for me, I'm going to change, get there, and then they change. And it's like, now I got the power. You forget the power is with the people. We were there 300 strong. Next meeting, we're going to have at least 1,000. After that, we're going to have 2,000. We're going to keep growing. And so I'm building out my five-month campaign. But if y'all see me pop up with a house in Stockton and you see me shopping at Walmart, just know I'm with the people. Not at Walmart. Well, I ain't going to be at Walmart, right? you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on. Look, back to the bullshit here at Hollywood Unlocked and Jason Lee's uh, experience. The Jason Lee Show has been a hit. I'm going to clap it up. Also, uh, I'm going to say shout out to Marina, Johnny, the whole team, uh, and to you, the viewers, because we've been having one lit shit, one lit shit, <laughs> one lit shit show after another, because it really is a shit show at this point. Oh, show, okay. Yeah. Um, so Marla Hampton from the Housewives of Atlanta was recently on and baby, she did not disappoint at all. Uh, that show has aired by this time. You've seen this, you've seen that. And if you haven't go over and watch it on Revolt's YouTube channel, here's just a little taste of what Marlo came and gave us here. When you think about the all-star cast of what the next season of Housewives of Atlanta could look like, who would that be from your point of view? You know what, Jason, I'm gonna be honest with you. This season on May 7th, 
you will not be disappointed. Really? Including candy. I mean, thanks to me. Really? I bring out the best dinner. <laughs> I bring out the fucking You bring best out the dinner. cavities. You okay, know let's out, go. Oh my God. I bring out Actually, the best dinner. Actually, we don't need to talk about candy. And cavities. another girl even brought out the best dinner. But this season, I promise you, the season, I can't even think about them recasting this group because it's so freaking good. It's really? new, it's fresh, it's different. You're going to love it. You're not going to be bored not one Sunday. Well, I'll be honest. You. I'm literally only watching for you. Well, watch it for me. I'm, only, I'm like, only watching for you. So this season with you all on The Housewives of Atlanta, you, you're saying that all the words I've used faces. about Candy being boring, lackluster, unworthy of being on the show, needing to be recast, needing to go find another job. I'm going to change my opinion this season. No, but you're going to say, Marla, you did make her work. She's not okay. going to be as boring, okay. especially when she's with me. Whenever, right. think about it. When she's not boring, she's going to be bringing up my name or it's going to be something with her family. Mm. She's boring by herself. Like, she needs her aunts and she needs me. Mm. Not the old lady gang. Listen, <laughs> you know, I know a lot of you in the comments were saying you were going to take a drink after every time we said the word candy. You will be an alcoholic by the end of that okay. podcast or that show. You know, I don't know. What did you think watching it? Did you think it was... How would you describe it? Um, I would describe it if you haven't seen it yet. That clip is the most mild part of it. Wigs were lifted, drinks were spilled, gifts were given, shade was thrown. A yeah. lot of shade was thrown, definitely shade. for sure. Like, I want to watch just because I was sat in there and saw the whole interview being conducted. And, like, literally, like, <laughs> It's like you can't even be in the room without laughing. I had to literally go in the bathroom and close the door because the stuff that she was saying was just like so outrageous, so true, so relevant that I was like, I should not be here. I shouldn't be listening. I should not know this knowledge that I know right now. And what you don't see at home is that after the taping, Jason was like, Rico, pull up the sprinter. We're going out. So all of us here at this table and Johnny, everybody, we all went out with Marlo. Well, I will tell you, Marlo has since called me several times <laughs> saying, um, how bad was it? I'd say it was, it was horrible. In a good way, though. It was it was exactly what I think daytime or TV is missing. It Correct. was highly entertaining. Uh, and again, I'll say here, I don't hate Candy. I don't hate Kenny. I don't hate any of the girls. But if I see you sitting outside of Neiman Marcus and your face looks like, you know, a, 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 a meteor exploded in the, air, in, the, in the universe and shot down and tore up your face, I got to say what I got to say. Now, Kenya is more than welcome to come here on the show. Candy and her coded knights can pull up everybody this is a this is a show for everybody but uh but i i could see how people can change the narrative oh they don't like me because they were talking about me we are talking about the culture and entertainment politics and pop culture and if you lie anywhere in that you could be a subject of conversation i don't get mad when you guys do it with me in fact i welcome you to do it all the youtube <laughs> community is going to have a lot to say about this and you know shout out to y'all doing your jobs everybody's eating off of it because when you talk about me talking about them you're making money off of talking about them too mm -hmm. so it's just a game where we i'm giving you i'm the content and you guys can digest it however you want. Just don't get no cavities. And I still play Escape at the house. I still play it. Who can you run to? You can run to me or you can run to Kleenex and cry tears. But either way, Marlo, you are a great guest. Um, good luck over there with the peaches. All right. Uh, yeah. You know, we yes. got through 16 episodes uh, already. And we're going to show you at the end of the show who our next guest is. So make sure that you stay locked in because I enjoyed that that one as well. But now we got to get into all the things uh, that you showed up for. And that is um, the tea with Jason Lee. <laughs> all right, Jamie Foxx, he's in the news. Uh, as you know, we talked about Jamie here recently where his daughter went live and said that he was in the hospital having had a minor complication, a medical complication. There were lots of rumors that surfaced. I'm just going to summarize this as we speed through because there's so much text here. Shout out to Ariella and her 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 uh, her uh, investigative note, uh, noting. But either way, he was in the hospital. They said that he had a stroke. That was the word allegedly. I'm going to say, there's that boom. Allegedly. On the streets. Then they said that it took a turn for the worse. Allegedly. And people said that the family was preparing for his funeral. Had me in my feelings where I got to making phone calls. Now, everybody know at Hollywood Unlocked, I know everybody. And I know how to unlock Hollywood in a way that others cannot. I was going to say something else more inappropriate, but I'm mm -hmm. trying to trying to be a better person. So I started calling around saying, what's going on? I called a very close friend of Jamie's, and they said, 
when the whole rumor came out that he was dying and he was going to die and they were burying him, they were like, nope, Jamie's fine. He's good. Don't worry about it. Whatever. Nope. No. I mean, they cut me off in the middle of my emotional plea to understand if Mr. Fox was going to be in a box. Okay. Mm. So then I said, okay, well, hold on. Jamie's okay. Then the next day, I text somebody else. Somebody else called me who's really big in the industry. They said, Jamie's dying. <laughs> That's not funny. That's no, not funny. no. That's listen, funny. we're gonna laugh. Dude, we're gonna laugh dying. because he's not dying. I'm not laughing. At There's you. some. Uh, I smell. <laughs> I smell some stuff going on, and I'm just gonna say what I think, based on what I know. Now, people can say I'm gonna say allegedly a lot here because I know people are gonna want to sue after this. I know people are gonna be upset. People, whatever. But it, it, I know I'm probably not gonna be inviting no more Jamie Foxx parties. But neither was Claudia Jordan after she said he was sleeping with Tom Cruise's wife. So let me go ahead and just go on and break this down. Katie Holmes, you remember when they was dating? That was, but it was true though. Allegedly. Claudia outed that. Claudia, how could you? Oh my you? God, not you outing Claudia <laughs> for outing. No, she already, Claudia, but she no, she you? got oh. slammed in the press for oh, that. She did. I she got that. slammed, and then the gag is when Jamie was had a, a, a um, they say he had a stroke. Claudia posted a photo saying, "Wish him well to my friend." Claudia, you are. Let me messy tell you, the boots. minute I get a chance to work with Claudia, I'm gonna live for it because she's messy. You're she's messy. messy boots. She's messy boots. All right, well, look, I didn't um, say it, but okay. So anyway, so people were saying. Jamie Foxx is having a heart. He had a stroke. Then they said he's getting better. Then they said he's dying. Then they said the funeral is being planned. Then all these people are saying, no, it's not. Then the daughter said he was playing pickleball. <laughs> I can tell you now, I've heard a lot of games that involve balls that Jamie has played. Basketball. Basketball. Nah, okay. Football. Tennis. <laughs> And what then I they, um, listen. Also, <laughs> I have to use a bathroom because I he's played. He's played a lot of. He's played a lot of. A lot of different types of sports. <laughs> but what I will say is, I've never heard Jamie Foxx play pickleball. I've never seen a picture of him playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. I googled it. I didn't see no pickleball. I didn't even know what the fuck a pickleball was. So I had to call somebody who looks like they play pickleball. And when they told me what it was, that playing pickleball. But whatever. <laughs> you know, Jamie is the type of person. I know the Jamie Foxx that we're talking about. Jamie's the type of person that if something was wrong and all of a sudden he's good enough to go play pickleball, he'd be like, whatever, everybody, it's me, Fox. I'm outside. Thank you for your prayers. Because you have the whole world posting that you're dying and that you're going to be in a box and we're planning your funerals and there's no more Jamie Foxx parties and, oh, my God, now you're playing pickleball. And it's almost disingenuous when you have the whole world preparing to mourn for your death that you not come forward and say, I'm okay. That you continue to let Nick Cannon step in and host this show for you. You know, uh, your daughter's now hosting this show for you. And listen, I'm sure if there was a medical emergency, and I'm going to say if allegedly, allegedly you had a stroke, I send my condolences to you. And I hope that you're uh, recovering well. But I also say as a per person of the public who is bought into you as a star and who's invested in you, you come into my home, you come into my ear pods with the songs, too much alcohol or what, much alcohol. get loose. What's going? Blame it on the alcohol. What we're going to do is we're going to have to blame this storyline on the alcohol because somebody who was in charge of getting the story out to the community fell asleep at the wheel. Now, what I heard... <laughs> is crazy. And I'm going to tell you what I heard, and I'm going to say allegedly, but I'm going to give you some context, okay? Give you some context. So when I start digging around asking what was happening, oh, making God. phone calls, and I said, I can't believe that Jamie Foxx is going to die. <laughs> and the person said to me, he ain't going to die. He was just at court. Mm -hmm. I said, at court? Jamie Foxx was at court. Supreme Court? Was it Judge Jerry Court? Was it Judge he Judy? Judge no, Mathis. he was about to Judge Mathis. I know it got canceled, but was he able with the Math Mathis family values? Like, what court was he at? Divorce court? You know, well, apparently, from what I heard from a source, was that the week right before this stroke happened, Jamie was in court, in a federal court, sequestered with Leonardo DiCaprio and a list of other people because he was involved with a person prize from the Fugees who was involved with that big scam. Now that scam involved Leonardo DiCaprio allegedly, prize uh, and Kamora Simmons' husband Tim Leisner. Now Tim Leisner was the banker mm. who was the person that put this whole hundred million dollar deal together, whatever, to scam hundreds of millions of dollars whatever. Now I'm going to tell you the story because there's so much here that I want to get into. And again this could be a conspiracy theory but so could a stroke, right? I don't know what's happening. I ain't seen Jamie. I don't know if his face is droopy. I got to I gotta see it because at this point, the person that told me told me enough that I need to know 
and I know what I know. All right? Now, Pross was found guilty last month of his role in a huge political conspiracy. Now, in 2019, he was first accused of defrauding the U.S. of over $20 million, $21 million, acting as, as an unregistered agent of a foreign government. Now, this is what Pross did. <laughs> Now, this is how your favorite stars get you all caught up in their music and their clothing and then turn around and do some scamming type shit. All right. Now, I'm glad because I need twenty one million dollars. I told call me. I told scam. somebody yesterday I was on a call with this billionaire. He said, oh, my company's worth three billion dollars. I said, my bank account has a lot of space. If you need to move any of that <laughs> over here, we'll let it you take some rent. Right. right? OK, well, listen. So Pras went from acting like a rapper to acting like a government official. And and so he was involved with all types of shit. Witness tampering. Prosecutors said that he allegedly received between 8 to $40 million for helping a Malaysian financer named Joe Low. <laughs> now, Joe went real low. I'm going to tell you how low <laughs> Joe went. Okay? Don't ask how low can you go. I'm going to tell you how low Joe went. Joe was accused of embezzling $4.5 billion from a government fund in his own country called 1MDB. Now, here's a photo of Joe Lowe and Proz. Just going to start connecting the dots. <laughs> Period, Joe. Now, Joe Lowe got them <laughs> rosy cheeks. He looked like the Asian Santa Claus, if you ever saw one. But either way, <laughs> never trust anybody with rosy red cheeks like that, okay? Who knows a big, fat, white man named Santa running around at everybody's house at one night eating <laughs> cookies. Asian. and I'm saying, oh. <laughs> if you couldn't find a white man to sit at Santa Claus at the mall, he could have sat in. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm done. Rico, why are you laughing? Y'all got malls in DR? Actually, we do. Yeah, the Z calls. You do? Oh, you guys do have a good mall. I just yeah. never got over there. But y'all yeah, do got we a went nice to the mall. Mall. It's a mall. Did we go to the mall? Yeah. Oh, I bought shoes there. Uh -huh. You bought a lot of stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all got to laugh like that? Because I think I bought shoes for some guys that were with us. Too. I'm not one to gossip, but. <laughs> Anyhow, um, <laughs> we did I go to the mall. That's a mess. <laughs> I've been so far all over the world, I don't know where I've been. I did go to the mall in DR. Yep. I almost but I didn't out. like their shoe choices. Anyway, back to this. Oh, now, a year before Pro okay, so Proz, you saw Proz and Joe Lowe. We don't know where Lauren was. We don't know where Wyclef was, because they 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 was the real Fuji's. This nigga moved <laughs> on. A year before Proz's charges, former Goldman Sachs banker Tim Leisner. Now, this is Kamora Lee Simmons' ex estranged husband. Now she had married the white man. Do we have a picture of him? Okay, that's Tim. Tim all the way at the right. That's the that's the banker guy. Proz is in the middle looking like, ooh, they caught us. And then Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio, <laughs> the Wolf of Wall Street, okay? Tim, Kimora's ex-husband, or strange husband, because they, they aren't divorced yet, was charged in Joe Lowe's $4.5 billion IMDB scheme because he no, was he was the banker. One not, MDB, not yeah. IMDB. Oh, I one, like, IMDB, no. I'm like, hold one on. One MDB, sorry, I'm, I'm acting. Well, fuck Clearly, up. okay. One MDB, IMDB is for actors. Who are, what okay, whatever. I thought, I, anyway, I, y'all need to put spaces between shit. <laughs> okay, well, look, so he was charged, um, Tim was, Kamora's estranged husband, in this scheme of over $4.5 billion. Now, in 2018, Tim pleaded guilty to conspiring with Joe and was ordered to forfeit over 3.3 million dollars worth 3.3 million shares of Celsius which included shares worth 93 million dollars that Kamora said was actually hers so while he was scamming 4.5 billion dollars or part of that with Joe Lowe, he was also scamming his wife out of 93 million dollars worth of stocks and bonds for Celsius the drink the energy drink i didn't even know Kamora Simmons owned that right i thought it was baby fat money honestly well, baby fat, well, baby fat money going towards all those jackets that you pregnant underage teens were wearing back in high school. But anyway, cold. I digress. Um, Every high school girl. Now, okay, so now Kamora said that those those shares were hers, and so clearly now Kamora's husband, who's living with her, who she has this idea of a relationship with, is now scamming her for ninety three million dollars mm. worth of shares, mm -hmm. while he's over here helping the Asian Santa Claus <laughs> with four point five billion dollars worth of schemes that pros this big eyed. And got involved with now you know not to trust nobody to look like whatever. Now, prosecutors are claiming that Proz helped him funnel the funds into Barack Obama's 2012 re-election campaign and even funded Leonardo DiCaprio's 2013 film Wolf of Wall Street. Now, Leonardo could say that this was all just acting and preparing for his role because he was a scammer in there too. Well, either way, let me just say, I have to show you the receipts, so I'm going to connect all these dots. Here's a photo of Leonardo and Joe Lowe. See, Joe get around. <laughs> Joe get around. Now, Leo and Joe, those two, 
allegedly have known each other professionally and socially since the 1990s. So they've been friends for a while. Now, the thing about scammers, because I used to be a scammer. <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm gonna be very well. Here's my disclaimer. I'm trying to quit. Right before Hollywood Unlocked took off, I was a scammer. Now, you're not going to find my scams because all the people that did them with me are either dead or will die if they come out. But I, we all are, we all got to get here. What? You called me being able to pull uh, rabbits out of a hat scams. I don't scam mm -hmm. people. Now, if you want to talk about Those that hoverboard, rabbits. you want to talk about that hoverboard deal you did. The hoverboard deal that you did. <laughs> First of the all, this man. Deal. Excuse, uh -uh. Anyway, scam. let's move scam. along. Anyway. We'll just leave that alone. Lord, but if you go back and let's do like go, God, you go back and if you go back and look on who was good in the more good morning America riding around on hoverboards, <laughs> you ain't gonna see me. Well, who got that forty thousand dollar check? <laughs> who cashed it? <laughs> who name was it? Who's <laughs> y'all going to jail? Please, y'all. Who name was no, it? No, but Jason, you First never worked with the Malay. Excuse me, thank God I edit the show. I don't scam let's keep jail. moving. What, Marina? What? <laughs> Those Asians gonna come for us if you edit this. No, I say you only. You told me the story. You only work with. What? You only work with the Russians, not the Malaysians uh, ever. Uh, 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 I just keep it moving. You. Keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> hey, 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 hey turn all the mics off. Let's keep moving. Don't we are not talking about that. Okay, so turn off the mics, Nicki Minaj. So, um, hmm. so <laughs> bottom line is, people scam. Okay, but I didn't know how to get four point five billion dollars, so I'm actually jealous. Now Leo found out about these charges. Now I'm gonna connect all this because remember we're still talking about the whole Jamie Foxx thing, and trust me, I'm gonna land this plane <laughs> <laughs> because Jamie know Joe Low too. Take a look at this picture. <laughs> not, not the arrows. Now he's a plug. I'm gonna get to what you say. He's, he's the plug. plug. I'm gonna show you how this is all connected. So anyway, Leo was subpoenaed to testify about all of what's happening mm. in the Joe Lowe case. Now, last month, Leo took the stand and confirmed Joe helped fund his movie. And now Jamie Foxx, who's close friends with Leo, has been roped into the conspiracy as well as one of the celebrities who's been connected with J -Lo, Joe, Joe as well. Now, not J-Lo, Joe. Now, it's even alleged, I'm going to... Alleged. Allegedly. It's even alleged that Jamie is a regular beneficiary of Joe Lowe's handouts of Malaysia's stolen money. And from what I understand, without going too much into detail, is that Jamie, right before this whole scandal of his stroke, was in New York or in New York or DC, I think DC, sequestered with allegedly, allegedly. with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tim Leisner as they were all preparing to testify against Joe Lowe. And the allegation Allegedly. is that Jamie wanted to evade testifying, and so he Allegedly. had a medical scare. Now, I don't know that to be the case, because I've reached out to a couple people, and now they're scared that I'm asking more questions. Because I told the person that told me that nothing was wrong with Jamie, that I find out everything. And I have no problem, because, you know, Jamie's not a friend of the show. I like Jamie. I'm a fan. But I didn't know all this scamming this was going on, okay? Now, remember, if, now, Joe, Leo, and Praz, uh, in 2012, did a whole party for this man in Australia for New Year's. Now, is there, are there pictures of that? There they go. Look at the arrows. Now, this ended with a second countdown in Vegas, because they went over there with all that money. And did something over there. Then they flew all the way over here because you know Australia's a day ahead. So you go when you're rich because I think we did it yeah, once. Yeah, we did two days twice. Where did we do it? So we landed. No, we, but where did we do Australia? We did Australia. Okay, so we did Australia. So we, yeah, we missed one day and we landed and we had to do another day twice. But did we do uh, New Year's? There was somewhere no, where we I was, went. To, we went in the, their summer. There was one country where we did that in Australia, but there's one country where I celebrated here and then came back and celebrated here. Mm. Well, they celebrated twice in in Vegas. Well, guess what? He flew back to have New Year's here with, uh, well, the person did an interview to talk about the experience. Take a look. Yeah. And, and I get the feeling you, you fully enjoy that kind of side of life. Would I be right in thinking that you appreciate the benefits? The benefits, man. Getting in the clubs and, I mean, you know, <laughs> Let me ask you this. restaurants and I think I know the answer, girls but coming, let me ask you this. Know? Where did you spend uh, New Year's Eve? Well, I, you know what? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about like this past yeah, this year? is the benefits of yeah, being a benefits, superstar. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a friend. You know, he got some money. He got some money. And uh, he flew me, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Jonah Hill, and some other cats. And we flew to Australia. 
right? And we did the countdown in Australia. Get out, Mike. How are you, Mike? Jamie, get out, Mike. <laughs> so we did the countdown in Australia, then jumped back on a plane, and then did the countdown in Vegas. That's crazy. So he had. Yeah. That's how famous yeah. he had two New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's, how that's crazy. You are now. That was two nuts. New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to be careful how you tell these stories. So now they're saying that, or the streets are saying that Jamie is involved and is actually being called to testify. And so, yeah, maybe he is all right. Maybe nothing is wrong. And maybe he, um, you know, all of this came about in order to set this up. But I will tell you, if this is true, if this is true and that nothing seriously happened, and I'm not saying nothing happened because I wasn't there. None of us were there. We don't know what's going on. But if this is true, that in a way of evading testifying in this case or as a result of testifying in this case that this happened, I see a lot of people going to jail. Everybody. That's a lot of money. But my thing is, I was reading online too that Jolo gave $100 million for to fund Wolf of Wall Street, but then why wouldn't Leonardo DiCaprio have a complication as well? Because mm -hmm. Leonardo would need to know that he embezzled that $100 million and gave it to him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if I give you $100 million, well, first of all, if I come in here and give anybody $100 million, y'all better all ask questions. Listen. Now, but the... But the but you, I, I'm, we not gonna ask questions. You not gonna if I come in here now. You know I got money, but if I come in here and I hand you you why would I you would the I, person I, that just crashed my Jeep last week a hundred a second so I need the money. You Ooh. don't need a hundred million dollars. Well, we're why not gonna ask I, questions because if I hand you a hundred million, exactly, million. okay. But this is the thing you're you should ask questions. If somebody there's been people that have wanted to give me money. Now I ain't gonna lie, it was hard not to take the. Let's talk about scams. Don't point at me, because I don't want no parts of none of this. Lee tried to force me to take counterfeit one time. Okay, people, let's tell the real story. I'm in Neiman's, and this is before the we Rich Jason Lee. We were in Bloomingdale's. Lee. Bloomingdale's, before the Rich Jason Lee, he was coming up. He needed money to fund this Hollywood Unlock operation, so we meet these Africans. They Talk, kinda, talk slower to make sure we can edit we it We met some Africans. We met some Africans. <laughs> he wanted, they could feel that we needed money. He, they, said, he said he couldn't invest. He said he couldn't invest. We needed an investment. Yeah, yeah. Bad. Bad. No, no, we needed it. Bad. bad. Like ramen noodles bad. So pretty bad. much, we go. I'm like, cool. The guy's like, I'm looking at him like, I calculate his outfit because you know I do that. His outfit like $10,000. I'm like, he just, a regular Wednesday, you dress $10,000. He got was so straight money. out of Nigeria though. No, he was straight out of the con. So pretty much, we... <laughs> not the Congo. Not the Congo. The con. The con. Like, ex-con. So pretty much, we go to this hotel, and I'm sitting here, like, my heart is telling me, I know this is God speaking to me, get out. Something's nah, not right. my heart was telling me where the money at. <laughs> exactly. And that's why you don't, you should listen to your heart and not... Your brain. <laughs> no, people. So anyway, we go to this hotel. Wait, and let me put a disclaimer up. We're just telling you a story of how we evaded being scammers. How we evaded, and we didn't participate we were victims yes we were victims we were absolutely victims. of scammers so anyway yeah but i mean we was gonna nah, just tell the anyway, story um i get into this hotel room and keep in mind at this time i don't live in la i'm from new jersey this guy's pulling down blinds and i'm looking oh, at no. jason like no he put on gloves hold on that's afterwards i'm telling <laughs> the story in order he's pulling down blinds then i'm looking at jason like if i die in here <laughs> like my ghost is gonna haunt you for eternity i know that for facts then he goes, puts on gloves. So then I'm like, about to shoot us and kill us in here. I already know what's about to happen. Then he goes and he gets these rectangular squares of, of paper. So they're like white paper. So I'm looking like, what the fuck is this? And I'm ready to get out. He says, okay, y'all want to see a trick? So I'm like, at this point, I'm scared to say no. He takes the money, pours cocaine on it, and another solution. He and poured the, a white powder. A white powder, which was cocaine, because he said to me, in your country, some people like to sniff this, but in my country, we make money. So I was like, okay, I just wanted to see because at this point, like, I, I just we're want to be get very killed clear. Anyway. I did not know I was going to a hotel with Lee and his cocaine okay, buddy friends. This was his. This is his <laughs> meeting, not my like meeting. This was his <laughs> meeting. So at the end of the day, we go in there. The loose rectangular white paper. He pours some solution on it. He puts an aluminum foil. He pours coke on it, and I'm sitting here like I'm ready out. This, the paper turns into money. But the crazy part is. This guy right here is so shady. He tries to take me out. After. No, 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 no. So he gives us he each a hundred dollar bill. Right, he does. So we li and he says, I can produce as much as you like. A million dollars, two million dollars. I can produce as much as you like. So and you, you know guys, going you guys go ahead and talk about it. 
and come back. So we left and we stopped by the Abbey because at this point I needed to have a drink. No, pretty much he was trying to test me. He stopped by the Abbey to see if the money was real. He thought I was an (laughs) idiot, but I'm from New Jersey and you should know Jersey's home of the scammers. He gave us, so we ordered the drinks. We at the bar chilling or whatever. So Jason thinks I'm dumb and says, pay for the drink. I'm like, this fuck. <laughs> he thinks I'm dumb. I'm going to take that fraudulent $100 bill we just got that was just in a pair <laughs> and spin it at the Abbey. Like, that's dumb. So I go, because I'm from New Jersey and I'm smart, smarter than I look. Jason, I lost it and I got to pee really bad. I bounced, went to the bathroom and I made him pay for it. But the I crazy- did pay for it and, and it, it cleared. It worked. I took it so to the bank. So I worked. thought this, you know, I've never been to Africa. Those of you blacks who found your way on a cruise called slavery and ended up over here yeah, or wherever, we don't know what goes on over there. I thought maybe this was some kind of uh, uh, mm-hmm. ancient Bugan, magic mm-hmm. or something. So he can I now. Believe in Jesus. So I believe in Jesus too, and I've been praying to God for an investor. I've been praying <laughs> to God for money. I've been praying to God for opportunity. Lord, please see me. You know, I had a book called God Must Have Forgotten About Me. Now He remembered me. I thought God had blessed me. So here I am believing that this cocaine lace liquid infused foil wrapping paper that turned into a hundred dollars could now multiply because God said He will multiply. What did He say? That's not exactly but what, what he did, said. He said so, what did he uh, say about more multi- so like he will supply your needs? He's Jehovah Okay, God, well, God, well I thought he was supplying my yeah. needs. So when I paid for it and it cleared, I thought we were good. So we went back to the Africans. Continue. There's more we going back to this? To, what? Did we oh just start, God. maybe? This, no, okay, started. speed it up for the view. So let me speed it up. I'm going to try to give you out a quick No, version. let me know. So we go back to the view. We go back to the Africans. He shows us that it works again. I then go to a 99 cent store and I get the little pin. <laughs> no, we went to Staples. Whatever. I go Staples. to the store to get the pin. You know how you run the a money pin, pin across the money. Oh, oh, yeah, money yeah, pin. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was getting ready to go out to the club that night because I was going to celebrate that I found an investor. <laughs> Not an investor. So when I got <laughs> so when I got the pin and tried to rub it across the money, it wouldn't work. Oh, hold on. Let me reiterate. Let me reiterate. So let's just paint the picture. Jason was very broke and very <laughs> desperate for money at this time. I was. So broke. we have a stack of this hundred, these hundred dollar bills, and we like God answered our prayers. He goes to get this money pin, and I just remember clearly. I was sitting across the room. I had to literally go. First of all, out it was a studio so apartment. It was just, wait, wait. It was a studio apartment, so there wasn't a lot. Of, hold on. They, wait. It was a studio apartment, so you, there's not across the room. He's literally sitting right, right here. Right there. I forgot. I was trying to. I was trying to be political. Literally, like we look at each other because the apartment is like small. I lived in a small apartment before too. But he has the money pen, and he's like a lottery ticket, scratching it off. I'm like, Jason, Jason, it's not working. So I got <laughs> another pen and another bill, and that one didn't work. And that's when I realized we were being scammed. So anyway, <laughs> to connecting the dots, to land the plane. This is the type of shit these people was doing just with $4.5 billion Lord. allegedly. Now, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to fast forward on to the next story. But let me just say, I don't know what's going on with Jamie Foxx. We pray. We pray that Jamie Foxx uh, isn't a part of this. We pray that Jamie Foxx is doing well. We pray that all of the news that I just told you is not real. We pray that I got bad intel. Y'all know about the queen, so it's happened before. We pray, even though y'all didn't see her. Uh, and you know, uh, anyway, I pray that this isn't real because then there's a lot of people going to jail and, and all y'all need to go to jail. Mm-hmm. Now we pray that he didn't, uh, and he can sing his way out of this. So Jamie, hope you're doing well and can't wait to see you on the gram. Jesus. All right. Well, listen, uh, this is not apply to my staff, so don't get excited. Elon Musk, the owner of Twitter is out uh, attacking people for wanting to remotely work. And people are working at home. They are having a good time working at home. And, you know, the pandemic proved that we could all work smarter, that we don't have to necessarily come in the office every day. Now, I know Marina and Johnny love working at home on Fridays. Every Thursday, I get a text from one of them saying, do we need to come in? And there really isn't a need to come in. But we were so conditioned to having to go to work that uh, sometimes I say, yeah, go to work. And sometimes I don't, don't. But, you know, really, there's no reason to be here. Well, Elon is saying that it's all bullshit. And he said that it's morally wrong for people to believe that they should be working at home. This is what he said. Look, I, I, I'm a big believer that, 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 that people need to are more productive when they're in person. Um, and, um, and, 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 and really, man, I, and the whole, the whole sort of work from home thing, it's like, it, it, I, I, I think it's, to, Look, there are some exceptions, but I, I kind of think that, that the whole notion of work from home is, is a bit like the, you know, the, the, the fake Marie Antoinette quote, let them eat cake. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, really, you're going to work from home and you're going to make everyone else who made your car come work, to the fa- work in the factory? You're going to make the people who 
make your food that gets delivered that they, they can't work from home the you know the, the, the people that, that come fix your house they, they can't work from home but you can does that seem morally right that's messed up you see it as a moral issue yes i mean i see it more as just it's, a, it's, a, 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 it's, a, it's a productivity issue but yeah. it's also a moral issue who wants to get off the goddamn uh, moral high horse with the work from home bullshit um because they're asking everyone else to not work from home while they do and yet there's, there's still pushback by the way it's still yeah. going on this battle is still happening i mean leaders of organizations and i speak to plenty of them i want people back i want people back three days a week they're still battling uh, it, it's not clear that yeah. it's ever going to change to people are not coming back no, no, five no, days look, a week look, people, the, 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 the laptop class is living in la la land okay the, as i said the you you, you can't but look at the cars are people working from from home here of course not um so the so the people were, were you know building cars servicing the cars uh, building houses, fixing houses, uh, making the food, um, making all the things that, 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 that people consume. It's, it's messed up to assume that, that, that this, they have to go to work, but you don't. Well, um, I got my makeup done for this show, and I don't know how she would do it from home. And I don't think it's disrespectful to support people who are essential to work that needs to be performed that have to leave their house. Uh, I choose to work at home most of the time because I have the luxury of working online and online is online. When I need to come to the studio, I'm here. Now I will tell you one of the things that cho that I that made me choose to end my podcast with Blue and Damage was that we were doing it remote. And then COVID had made it so non-interesting because you couldn't touch the other people. You couldn't have the interaction. There's a different energy when you're sitting across from Marlo having a conversation versus interviewing her online. And so, yeah, I do need to come out the house. I also think that it's healthy for Americans to get their asses off the couch and get outside. And with AI around the corner, that's going to revolutionary change, revolutionary in a revolutionary way, change the world that we live in now. You know, I don't know how complicated that is for people who don't need to go in, but for people who are essential to actually go in, like hospital workers or food delivery folks or whatever. Yeah, I think it's important to continue to advocate for those jobs as well. Right. Like, um, it's 50 50. Um, I definitely see the benefit of going in. I'm not going to lie. When I go in, I'm way more focused, but I definitely think I'm a as efficient at home. It should just be like monitoring systems, like, you know, not ready times and stuff like that when you're at home to make sure that, that the person is being productive. I guess your employee, but as long as the employee is productive, they're happy, they're most likely going to be a little bit more loyal. So I, I don't know. But for me, I, I like going in. I ain't going to lie. I like to go in. I mean, it's, it's a little better for me. Well, his opinions is most likely like personally wise because he say more, he say he did point an issue about morally. I don't even know if I say the word right. Morally. Morally, yeah. But I don't know how it's amoral to not to go. Not because I'm saying that he oh. he he just his opinion was like a personal one. This, no, because I, I think saying. he went on. It kind of got cut off. But <clears throat> I watched the whole thing, and he was basically saying it's it's morally wrong for you to work from home when the food that you're eating was made in a factory of people who can't choose. Well, the home. food that you're eating was made in a in a field because that's where food <laughs> comes from. Whether it's a cow yeah, grazing okay. in a field or or vegetables and fruit in right. the ground in a no, field. No, for sure. But I feel like the people who are like everyone, I have to work from home. I don't want to go to the office. But it's like they did the interview in the Tesla factory, so it's like they have to come to the factory to make the Teslas. So he's basically just saying you can't talk about I have to work from home forever when there's people like service workers who don't have the option to work remote. That's that, when the moral came. But in. that's the beautiful part about America. Because it's different jobs for different people. Yeah. So everybody like wouldn't yeah. be required. Every job can't be at home. Every job can't be on the field. Well, let's but, go beyond America, though, because technology is not as advanced in other countries. And other right. countries That's have true. goods and services that they provide for the world. You know, you have to remember that the world functions on trade. So every country has different things. Oil cannot be done online. You have to have oil mines. You have to have people that mine that. You have to have people that put it in barrels that ship it and all that. That requires labor. Like you're no, no matter how far technology, unless they somehow get some type of digital pipeline for oil to go from here to there, which I'm not going to say will never happen because you, never know. Yeah. you, you know, never know. You know, I, you're going to always need people, but people do need to get off their high horse thinking that everybody has to do everything that they believe. Mm -hmm. you, Elon has ruined Twitter, by the way. Twitter is just, it's, it's horrible. And I'm not saying that because you took my blue check. I'm saying that because at this point, it's become, social media is not what it was. And although things are supposed to advance, I don't see the advancement of what, t, uh, what uh, Elon has done to benefit the world in any way. In fact, if you the people in D.C. are asleep at the White House, the Republicans and the rich are buying 
news platforms to start putting out propaganda and mm -hmm. opening up space for free speech to really put out hate hate mongering movements and messaging to help move the agenda for the Republican Party. I'm not uh, being paid by the Democrats or by the White House to advise them on where it's happening, but I see it happening all around. Yeah. All around. And Twitter being one, this man paid $44 billion for Twitter. And then now it's just like, okay, I'm not going to run it. Somebody else can do it. Yeah, he has a lot of nerve to be talking about morals when he's the least morally, like, he used morals for nothing. Literally, like, Amazon took all my money during the pandemic. I don't know about y'all, but like that, First of all, it's the first moral thing. Then on top of that, there's the rumors Wait, about how you treat. Oh, that is Bezos. <laughs> different white billionaire. But it's still anyway. white billionaire. <laughs> but still, they all do the same thing. But I'm at Amazon now, so we love you, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, if that's the case. But don't y'all agree that like I I like what he said about laptop. Wait, laptop schools in La La Land? Because yeah. that's facts. Like yeah. when, because of COVID, COVID fucked up college because now people can get degrees from a laptop, but you can cheat well, and do this. You can get thing. a degree from. Facts, downtown, yeah, too. but you also That's go send true. your kid to school and they not come back. So like, so laptops, so let me say, help. and let me say, this, I li I do like Elon Musk. I mean, people can say whatever they want. Anybody who can be autistic, come from you know, uh, you know, decent means and become wealthy, lose it all. His man, a lot. His man, okay, he created PayPal. Let's start with that. You do no, know that? I did no, not know, I didn't that. know that. Um, he did. He co-founded PayPal. Elon, Elon co-founded PayPal. Sold PayPal for crazy money, then um, then invest then almost then invested every penny in Tesla, or uh, and his come up story is crazy. But he invested all his money in Tesla, was gonna lose everything, he lost all the money. Then he created a subscription model for people to pay for the Teslas before they were even created. Got all this crazy money, started delivering Teslas. Then created a spaceship program. I mean, he's brilliant in many ways. Yes. Uh, but he, but with brilliance, as we also know, there's borderline crazy. And, you know, Elon, we love everything that you're doing to become the richest man in the world. But, you know, everybody else isn't where you are. And the real world is that, you know, I think sometimes in the real world, when people do make so much money, because there's even times where, like, I'm not nowhere near as successful Elon. But there are times where, like, I've asked some of my friends, have I changed from when I was in that studio apartment, eating top ramen, didn't have a car, didn't have no money, didn't have no resources? Yes, there are some things about my lifestyle that have changed, but I still try to keep myself around people whose feet are still on the ground because those are the people that I'm advocating for, the I Am Ready movements and all that, the people who are still getting shot on the way to school or not being able to you know, have a creative outlet for their dreams, but whatever. Elon, uh, keep that bullshit over there because my staff are not working at home. Uh, and those that are working at home, sometimes when I get mad, I'll be making y'all come to the office for nothing. Next topic. So now you know. All right. Um, don't know if OnlyFans is hiring, but she might be up for the job. Martha Stewart, she's 81, busting it open on um, Sports Illustrated. Well, she didn't really bust it open. but um, She, like, slid it. She slid it. Do we have the photos? Let me just show you the photos now. She's 81 years old, covering Sports Illustrated. I really liked her confidence. Um, the photo on the left, though, they could have fixed that a little bit. They could have tucked her stomach in or put some yeah, kind of skim on her. Too. Yeah, it's just it's it's giving real um, golden girls at the bottom, uh, living single in the middle, and then just letting it all loose at the top. But either way, she's eighty one. She's the oldest person to cover um, the the uh, cover of Sports Illustrated, and you know people have had a lot to say. But I I would say she looked great. I love the fact that she's been to prison and got out and is doing her <laughs> thing, and she smokes weed with Snoop Dogg. So like she, Martha's one invited to the cookout. What did you think when y'all saw it? She looking for a sugar baby? No. Rico, no, she's not looking for a sugar oh. baby. So you would have sex with Martha Stewart? I mean, don't lie, yes. Rico. 81? So? It's kind of high, but fuck it. YOLO. Wow. YOLO. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, like what, YOLO. But what if you Yolo. broke her hip? Ooh, all the money's, all, the, all her willings is gonna come to me. <laughs> he didn't say kill her. No. She would have to die. No, but she's going to be hurt. So what like, hip you know, her are you person. dealing with? She would die. The fact that you all are planning on breaking Martha Stewart's hip, hip so you can be there to help her is crazy. That is me. crazy, though. And this is a testament to all you women out there getting these young men coming in there thinking they're going to really be of service when really they're going to service your bank account in a one-way <laughs> direction. What did I you do. Think? I feel like ageism is real because the streets were in an uproar about this damn cover. But for me... I'm here for the titties out. I'm here for Martha. And in the article, she talked about like hating Botox and like promoting aging, which I feel like not a lot of people do. I'm here for her. 
but she also she Botox. Well, she said she, she was against, against she was against doing anything to change, make herself look younger because she, she's all about getting older and whatever. Correct. That face is full of and, Botox. Just to well, say. It, maybe it is or maybe it isn't, but I'll say I I do Botox, I do fillers, I do threads, I do all of that. I do stem cell, I do facials. I'm all about doing the best to preserve the look that I want. And, you know, earlier today when I came in, I even I keep asking everybody if I've lost too much weight because now I'm at 195 pounds, which is not, I haven't weighed this low since I was in my early 20s. So being 45, losing all that weight, um, you know, you do start to, especially with online, like the conversation we're having now, you start to develop like cuckoo-ness about how you look. Mm -hmm. I think you should do what makes you feel happy. As For long sure. as you're healthy, you feel happy, do nah, you. Do what makes you happy, but I feel like not a lot of people say that. So I just like both sides of the spectrum. And also, people better put respect on um, my baby Martha because she started her career in modeling to pay her college tuition. She was the model for Chanel. Mm. Whoa. I have a so, picture with her so long ago, but I was so fat in that picture that I'm not going to even post it. I think hanging out with Snoop Dogg <laughs> did her some justice. I really think. Nah, she was, she was getting this that dick. This is like the most wide. think Snoop was fucking Martha? No, I don't, think, oh. I, I don't think Snoop was hitting it, but I think Martha definitely had some, some BBC, for sure. For Absolutely. sure. You could tell her energy is too comfortable her swag. around black people. She's Just her swag. Somebody knocked that dust off. I mean... <laughs> She from she not bad. She eighty one. Like you, you don't. That's not what I think. No, of but I'm I think sorry. 81. I eighty one. Like first of all, we just I saw a whole segment on erectile dysfunction. I don't even know when the penis stops working. But at eighty one, at eighty one, it's just your, your mouth got to work at that point. Ain't so it? she can't be a city <laughs> girl. Gotta work. I mean, you should not be a city girl at 81, but Martha's rich. She don't need to be a city girl. Why can't she be a city girl at 81? Anyway, let's move on. Congratulations, Martha, for knocking down barriers and uh, paving the pathway for Madonna to do it next. All right. Um, I don't even want to talk about this next person because we don't even talk about her at Hollywood a lot because she's so fake and messy and nasty and mean-spirited and evil. But Erica Mena, she's uh, in the news being called out by Spice. Now, if you've watched Hollywood Unlocked over the years, you know that we stopped talking about Erica Mena when she got pregnant with her last baby with Safari. I'll speed you up. Erica Mena was a friend of mine. At least she said she was. You know, the whole Holly, you know, the whole love and hip hop thing where everybody thinks they're friends, but they're really not. Well, she said she thought she was my friend. Well, when I wanted her to come on my show, she wouldn't come on my show. And then I found out that she was pregnant by Safari, but I found out because she didn't get along with the glam team that did the makeup and everything and shot her for the for the baby reveal. And they told me that she was pregnant and sent me the pictures before that were gonna come out. So I outed her pregnancy with Safari before it came out and she was livid. She sent me these DMs, motherfucking this, motherfucking that, motherfucking what. Oh she can't God. really spell, but whatever. She said what she had to say. <gasps> she was so irrelevant that I didn't really respond to her because my friendship was with Safari. Those of you that saw that drunk day in Mexico where I did the whole Google it. Um, me and Safari, we have our own friendship. Um, and um, yeah. yeah, I didn't really like her. I didn't really like her attitude. And so I told my team, don't ever write about her anymore. But baby, we had to write about you yesterday because Spice, who's also on Love and Hip Hop, went all the way in in Patois. I don't know. She was talking so fast. I don't know what that lingo was. I had to do Google Translate to listen. I had to Shazam it. I didn't know what she was, this, this, that. You don't believe me? I'm going to show you in a second. But apparently she was mad because Spice got caught in this love triangle between Erica Safari and his new boo, Amara La Negra, who is a friend to the show, who we love to death, who just had some beautiful twins and got that body snatched back. And Erica, I remember Safari bought the baby's Rolexes for their birthday, probably took kid out of Erica Mena's kid's mouth, which is why she's really upset because she's probably somewhere sitting on an island in some kind of windowless box or whatever. Well, this is what Spice had to say in response to all the drama that's going on between Safari and Erica and the divorce they got going on. Listen. I see some people, let me make sure I take a deep breath because I don't know I'm still ready. I see the media talk about saying, oh, this is a storyline. I don't do storyline. I don't do fake story. Anything will come out of my mouth and the story what I do and the scene when I go to, it's 100% real. Because I don't have no time for the fakeness. I don't like fake people. Just... So let me just explain something to you. Erica Mina, you're fake as fuck. You sit down in front of my face and I laugh and I talk. But oh, I love you so much. I was praying for you. And when you was dying, bitch, when you when I was dying and Safari was crying.
crying? You was acting ballistic in the house. Why are you crying for this bitch? Why are you crying for her? You wasn't crying for me. Like, what's the comparison? Whatever you have going on in your house, now I have nothing to do with me, Erica. Whatever Safari is doing to you, you don't have nothing to do with me. So when you compare yourself, what's this jealousy over me? What's this jealousy over Safari like me? Me and him are just friends. Me not fucking baby. Baby, I promise you 100% and a million dollars. I love looking me not gone to bed. Me not fuck Safari. Me not fucking baby. You have to get it in your head. Because you 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 play victim. Everywhere you go, you screamed on the place. I invited to my gala and I invited you to, in a Miami. You come. Hi, baby. So, I don't even remember which part of me there. Erica, you're fake as fuck. You couldn't sit down and have a conversation with me. You know why? Because you know, say, I'm not the one, two, nor the three. I'm going to look on you and I can do it and tell you in front of your face. I'm not fake like you. All of the shit them you do behind my back, I heard. Me hear about it. Them come back to me and them tell me. Me know say you're fake. So when me see you, oh Spice, I love you so much. I'm just high and cut and go through. It's for a reason. It's because me know say you're fake. Me, me hear all of the shit where you, where you talk about me. You come on my gala. You scream down the place that talk about Safari and Ray, Ray, Ray. Oh my God. And you mar your Safari divorced one year now. And you're still a fuck him. And that's the problem. And because me tell you say you're still a fuck Safari. Because you're going to tell me, say, oh, me, 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 me talk about this faggot. I'm become fuck up up to last month, him still a fuck you. You yeah, and him still a fuck. So, what the problem? I don't understand. You're vexed with me because I'm Amara, a friend. And because I'm going to Miami and I talk to Amara. Amara was my friend before she got there with Safari. Amara was my friend before she and Safari start dates. It not have nothing to do with me, baby. I don't have no control over Safari dick. So, you have me up and you eat me because me and Amara was friend. But remember, you and Nikki Baby was friend. And you have a fuck Safari when you and Nikki Baby was friend. And him was with Nikki Baby. Remember, you and Estalita was friend. And you know, say Estalita and Safari did a fuck. And you still go fuck him same way. And then you run down the aisle. So, you feel like so when you did the marriage, him and you go change. Now, you're balling and I scream down the place. And I talk about, oh my God. Um, you know, I'm a single mother. I'm a single mother too. And guess what, baby? I've been doing it for 14 years. So, me and you talk and you couldn't talk to me because me ask you where's your son you scream down the place for this for two children you need to have the energy for this tree a tree you have so you're vexed because me say your, your, your oldest son not like you because you drop him off and him at five and I know you're not go back and pick him up bitch let me tell you something don't play with me I'm not the one, two, nor the three. Okay, I, what I got was she's not the one, two, two or three. Or three. Um, there was a lot that was said, and I don't know everything, because Spice, you were so fast and funny with that. Fast and furious. That I don't know what the hell you said. Now, what I do know, you said she's fake as fuck. She needs to go get her vagina checked out and check on her first son, who allegedly doesn't like her, for allegedly abandoning him. And then you also, you said a lot. You said a lot. But either way, um, what did y'all think about that? Generally, when we're in church and someone's speaking in tongues, there's an interpreter. <laughs> so I was waiting for the interpretation. But what I did get from it, first of all, I love this lady because she got the Poom Poom song. Black China, Poom Poom. Kylie, Poom Poom. Okay. Anyway, I love her. But the way that she got, <laughs> what I did understand is she's very upset. Uh, Erica did something to her and needs to have energy for her children. And I loved it. Now, the crazy part is Erica, and I'm, and please, Erica, don't take this as a compliment. And please don't take this as like, um, like a peace offering to call me because you're blocked and you, you're not allowed to call me. In fact, I'll, I'll report you to <laughs> all authorities, okay? Um, if you ever try to call me. Uh, she's actually a fun girl. Like when you hang out with her, she's fun. You know, she's bisexual. She, she likes girls uh, and guys, whatever. Uh, she's fun. She's wild, has this fun person. But she's, she's cuckoo. She's literally cuckoo. Like she was saying, like you'll sit up here and talk shit about people behind their back and they'll be like, hey girl, I, like she's fake. She's all of that, and she's violent. Um, and and I'm just so glad that she doesn't live in LA anymore. I don't know what slum she's in now, but I hope she never comes back here. Um, but yeah, I I'm I'm glad that Spice called her out. Now it's probably for a storyline on Love and Hip Hop because that's what they do. I hate talking about Love and Hip Hop people because I know that they run to the internet to start the storyline that then becomes something that goes into that. Um, I don't know. What do you think? For me, it was a gag that she did this screaming in the Delta terminal of the airport because did you watch the whole live? People were coming and, up asking for selfies the, and she's she, like, hold she on. She answered up in one of the videos. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, I'm you, not gonna say it in my own words because y'all are gonna cancel me and call me Chet Hanks if absolutely. I do a little Absolutely, don't play around. We don't, don't, play do don't play with it, don't play with it. You I'm know not what's gonna crazy? That. That's the only thing I understood from that video. <laughs> that part right there. What? 
when when she got stopped, like I could not understand. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Marina. Finish. <laughs> oh no, that's what I was gonna say. It was that for me and her outing Nikki for fucking um ba- <laughs> Nikki baby for fucking Safari. That's just well, yeah, about? but that was a storyline that I was a part of on Love and Hip Hop Ooh. when they were I together. And the last time I saw Gosh. Erica, me, her, and Nikki Bay were in the bathroom at a award show. They were doing whatever I was filming and put on Snapchat. That's when I was on Snapchat. Anyway, um, I hope that Safari finds happiness. Um, I hope he finds it with Amara La Negra. She is on her boss shit. I love Amara. Amara don't be in love. no mess. I don't know if that's a storyline relationship because at some point, Safari has to sleep with everybody to keep a story going. Um, you know, he's been with Nikki Baby, Erica Mena, Amara La Negra. Nicki Minaj. He's been with a lot of different people. I'm talking about in love and hip hop world. Oh, copy. Um, but yeah, wish him the best. Oh, the barber's gonna get you for trying to get me to be messy, by the way. Just oh. so you know. And I didn't buy right into it. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna wish anybody well in this situation. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Bye. All right. Um, now this is something I couldn't wait to talk about. And this is the basketball player Ja Morant. He flashed another gun on Instagram Live. Now, if you don't know who this is, let me tell you, he's a grizzly. Literally, he plays in the NBA for the Grizzlies. Uh, And he's caused a whole bunch of controversy two months ago is when he got into his first controversy where he was seen in a strip club waving a gun. And that was uh, that was back in March. Well, uh, he those of you that remember, he went live. He was in a strip club dancing around, had a gun, whatever. He had to pay his dues to the NBA who fined him eight games. He couldn't play for eight games. He got suspended. That was his first uh, discipline. And people were calling him out, saying how reckless it is. And then you think about it. These people fight hard to get out the hood. Or they go to live a decent life with a middle class family and they become somebody that makes it in the league, which is the pathway to riches and promises. And then, you know, he became one of what they're saying is one of the best players in the NBA. I don't know because I don't watch unless you're Aaron Gordon or somebody else that I, Kelly Obrey. Those are the only two people that I watch. You know why, personal reasons. Well, anyway, he, he got suspended for eight games without pay. Uh, and they said that he's being detrimental to the league. Now, let me show you the photo of him flashing the first gun. This is him putting the gun near his head, playing around with the gun in the club. Now, he has no shirt on, whatever. A lot goes down in the strip club. Now, he had the internet split with people condemning him for making foolish decisions and others upset at the penalties because they said that he was getting way too much criticism and it was not fair. Now, I'll tell you at the top of the show where I talked about the young 13-year-old boy who was killed accidentally by a 16-year-old brother. This is why you don't have basketball stars who people look up to like this idiot being able to do the things that he did because then kids start to emulate it and then they accidentally shoot themselves or their brothers or sisters and then it ends up in violence. He became a basketball player whether he wanted to be a superstar that's 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 looked up to by kids or not. That is the position and responsibility that people take when they become public figures. He released a statement and this is what the statement said. I'm taking full responsibility for my actions. He said, I'm sorry to my families." To my family, my fans, my partners, and the Grizzlies organization and the city of Memphis for letting you down, he said he would be working on learning better methods for dealing with stress and his overall well-being. I get stressed every day. I'm stressed right now because I got somewhere I got to be. But I'm not stressed enough to where I'm going to bring a gun and put it to the side of my head and dance around like a fool. Nor am I going to do it on live, and nor am I going to do it around people that I can hurt. Uh, but he said he was going to work on his well-being. Well, being that it's two months later and that didn't work, he's back in the news again because he got caught flashing another gun, and this was on his friend's live. Now, the craziest part about this, which I'm going to show you, is your friend set you up. Your friend wanted clout. He knew your dumb ass had a gun in your hand. He knew he was live. You probably thought he was filming it for some home video. And this dummy broadcasted it to where these mo- people all over the internet, including us at Hollywood Unlocked, picked it up. And now we're going to show you again. That's the photo of him in what looks like a scene from GTA riding around with a gun. Who are you looking for? The people that kill young Dolph? Who? Who are you looking for? Who do you want to shoot? Why do you have a gun? Why don't you have security? You're rich. Well, anyway, he now is in trouble again with the Grizzlies because they've now suspended him from all team activities and released a statement. Now, this is what they said, the team said. We're aware of the social media video involving Jay Morant. He's suspended from all team activities pending league review. We have no further comment at this time. Well, let's be very clear. The NBA isn't playing right now unless you're in the finals, so they're not active. So they're basically saying right now he's not involved with us until the NBA takes action. 
Well, the NBA commissioner went live. I saw this on ESPN and or one of the sports uh, networks, and they said that this was a disappointment. He sat in front of him for a long time, told him that he knew he made mistakes, he was going to do better, and he didn't do better. Uh, I, I, I'm going to weigh in real quick and tell you what I think. I think you should be sent to go work at Chipotle. I think you should be sent to work uh, for community service or garbage trucks or something, just service industry. You need to just be, you need to be demoted from this rich, elitist position of believing that your actions don't require accountability and feel what us real people feel. I'm even say I'm real because even though I have money, I still understand the responsibility that I play to my community, to my people around me and to the world that I live in and to the people that watch me. You are completely irresponsible. And anybody that stands up for you online that says you need to be given another chance, you were given another chance and you squandered it by showing that you thought you were better than everybody else. And now you need to feel the consequences that everybody else would feel. I hate when celebrities get to do stuff and get away with it that that normal people wouldn't be able to do just because you have money, because you make a lot of other people money. Anybody at this point that allows you to continue uh, in the NBA are only siding and aiding and abetting in the belief that you're better than the people that buy the tickets to watch the show or the people that show up online or the advertisers that spend their money to be able to promote to families that matter. You're a loser by every measure, and you can be a loser in prison playing basketball. There are a lot of good black basketball players in prison. Um, I think you should go to jail. Maybe not go to jail because you didn't hurt nobody. Maybe it wasn't illegal. Brandishing a firearm is illegal, so you kind of were brandishing it. I don't know, but I think you should lose everything and when it, as it relates to the NBA. I don't have any empathy for you. Uh, what do you guys think? I don't know anything about basketball. I'm not even going to pretend I do, but... I feel like if you do something one time, it's a mistake. But if you do it a second time, it's a decision. And March and May is not that far apart from each other. This just happened a couple months ago. So it's just weird to me. And I feel like the NBA is trying to, I saw that he's basically not going to be eligible for the all NBA award where he's going to miss $40 million. But it's like, who gives a fuck about that when he's already cashed in $194 million off this contract? Yeah, you have so enough. Really... He has enough money. You're not going to lose anything. Right. He needs to be terminated from the NBA. You're Send right. him overseas to a D League or a C League or a Z League. I don't even know what letter it is. But Ooh. you don't need to play anymore in the NBA because you, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't appreciate it. Correct. Yeah, not overseas though. Not send him overseas. That's where all the basketball players that didn't make it go. Well, maybe he'll take a. Maybe he'll take a. They got more money. Though. Maybe he'll take a okay. gun on a trip to Russia. You know, end up locked up like Britney was. Well, At least it'll make sense. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to accept that. All right. Well, look. There's other people like Jalen Rose who said that um, he still has a future despite his decisions. Take a listen. And for Ja to put himself in this situation just a short time after that scenario happened, I agree with Stephen A. This is going to be a 2025 game suspension it's unfortunate also for the organization because now it puts a damper going into next season right, how well can you play if you're going to miss John Morant for so many games but also I gotta I, I gotta also say this he is 23 he just finished his fourth year in the league and I'm personally just glad that social media didn't exist when I was in college or when I was in the league because like I said before, I put myself in a lot of questionable um, positions and made a lot of poor decisions like we see him making right now. So I'm not gonna talk about it like it's the end for him. I think there's still a future for him to still reclaim his decision making and put himself in position to not only be a role model, a parent. I, you know, Jalen, I like you. We've talked several times. I know you watched the show. Hey, Jalen, I disagree. I disagree with you. I said what I said and Shannon Sharp, who I am a fan of too, just like I'm a fan of yours, um, Jalen had something different to say. Take a listen. Where I am, I'm not even upset at y'all. I'm not mad. I'm not disappointed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm mad. I'm upset. I'm disappointed. I'm disgusted by the people that defended him. Because that's what got us here. That's what got us here, Skip. Oh, man, Shadow, you, you hating on Ja. You were Uncle Tom, you Rucker, who, you who Buck. I don't know who this is. The same people that yeah. Ja in the comments, yeah. that Ja be oh, liking. Oh, these are Twitter Yeah, people. yeah. Not, not Grizzlies. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. The, the, the clicks and the okay. mention and the likes, 
why he does everything that he does. Skip, I need somebody to tell me the fascination he has with guns and feel that he needs to be on IG Live, that he needs to see people see him with that tool on him. What is that? Is that the only way you could listen to young boy, NBA young boy, Skip? Is that you got to have that stick and bob and weaving and bouncing? bouncing? And your homeboys. That iron. Yeah, Skip, he want that. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, you know I told that fire with me now. Yeah. I don't know why Ja homeboys need to put, every time Ja get around, they need to be on IG Live. Mm. Ja roll with you. That should be good enough. That should be the, all the validation you need. Mm -hmm. But they need further validation. That's why they pick up IG Live, Skip. Look, look who you're in the, in the car with your boy. I got Ja. You Memphis on Devontae Pack's IG Live, not on Jaws. This yeah, time, but I'm saying this time. Yeah. He has to pick up his IG Live to get validation to say, I know Ja. Ja, my boy. He roll with me. Skip, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I know Ja Morant. But to have Ja Morant, see, the hair is the problem. See, Ja can't do any further embarrassment to himself. Yeah. What about to the Memphis Grizzlies? Mm. What about to the NBA? What about the Nike? What about the Powerade? Now, I want to know. I want to know who's going to be the treasurer of that GoFundMe because he's about to lose that NBA contract. He's about to lose that power weight endorsement. Well, still don't feel sorry for you. Bye, bye, bye. Okay, and you know, um, I didn't think I would find a day that I would agree with Kwame Brown. He's a former NBA uh, uh, all-star or NBA star. But he called him a dumb boy and had a lot to say. And I'm just going to keep playing more of other people's opinions to validate my own. Listen. What is up with all this music you keep listening to? Is this music putting you in a trance, dumbass boy? Because this music is about to cost you your fucking career. You're going to be bouncing around with this all day long, just listening to music in the backyard of a goddamn shack if you keep on being a jackass. You was an NBA dumb boy, and your friends ain't your goddamn friend. Cut this. That ain't going to scare no motherfucking body, so what the fuck are you doing? All you doing is making yourself look stupid. You are lowering yourself to the level of your mother friends. And they not your friends. Because your friends should have looked at you with that goddamn gun in your hand, slapped that motherfucker out your hand, and fought you on camera. Because you know why? At least the white folks that paying you can say, you know what, at least he got somebody around him that care about him. That should have been whipping your ass with that gun on camera so them white folks cannot void your goddamn contract. Because he eating off your dumb ass. And you're going to sink the whole ship because you want to be a street nigga. And them white folks not going to leave you with that type of money. You trying to be a street nigga. So your daddy can smile at every game all he want to. But the moment them white folks see that guy in the picture, boy, you finna lose a shit ton of money. I'm, I'm done talking to your dumb man. You just dumb. You just a f***ing jump. You a straight up That's the problem. Didn't disagree there. Yeah, I'm I'm over John Morant. Um, I think that um, he should lose his NBA contract. He should lose all his endorsements. He should be treated like a normal person would. If anybody that was working at Chipotle or at the or at waste for public the city waved a gun and was caught doing things online, they would lose their jobs. And I'm tired of celebrities getting um, preferential treatment or treated differently. And I don't think that he's any more special than those folks. So, bye, Jaws. Good seeing you. But he probably ain't going to go nowhere because that's just the world we live in. Celebrities get to do whatever they want. All right. Well, here's another celebrity doing what he wants. Uh, my friend, Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon recently celebrated Mother's Day um, with all the mothers of his children. He has a few. As we all know, he was here on the Jason Lee Show or over on the Jason Lee Show talking about it. Well, ahead of this year's Mother's Day, Nick decided to do things a little differently and give the six women who mothered his kids handwritten messages as well as, uh, you know, love. But anyway, as we all know, Nick has 12 kids with six women. And here's the family tree. Nick has twins, Moroccan and Moreau with Mariah. Then Nick has Golden, Saigon, Powerful Queen, and Rise Messiah with Brittany Bell. Then he has... Uh, oh, with Alyssa Scott, he welcomed Zen, who sadly passed away at five months from brain cancer. And then... They welcome daughter Halo Marie. Then Nick uh, had another set of twins, Zion and Zillin, with Abby De La Rosa, who he has the show, The Daily Canon, over at Ant Radio. Then Nick had a son, Legendary Love, with Bree. And then Nick welcomed his 12th child with a girl named, a girl named Onyx Ice Cole with a girl named Lanisha Cole. Okay. 
Now, if you remember, Nick was in some hot water when he forgot Onyx's name or the spelling of a name or something on one of those interviews. And so when he came on our show, we gave get, we gave a gift to Nick in order to prevent him from running into problems with his baby moms if he was ever to be questioned about their names again. If you missed that interview at the Jason Lee Show, take a look. Last time you were here, you had three kids. Now you have 12. 12. Potentially a 13th on the way. That's you can the, see. The see, that's keep, what I'm no, talking about. The streets keep saying that. See? That's that low that. vibration. No, I, I got, no, I got twelve. No, I want, I, I want, dearly. I want, I want to, I want to give you gifts because we do give gifts on the show. Don't be giving me no awards like you gave uh, Hitman. Listen, I would never disrespect you by giving you award. Okay, so first, um, I'm gonna give you this award. This, this is one. I mean, not award. This is a gift. Uh, these are flashcards. Okay. Yeah. With all your kids' names on. Uh, ha! Um, I did. I fucked up. But is but but people, no but that Howard <laughs> me up because first of all, I was I was he interrupted me as I was going in order. Right. And the funny thing is like the, to, if you want guys on the truth, the my my beautiful daughter Onyx, that's probably the child that I spend the most time with. Really. I'm with her at least three times a week for the full day. But I don't put that out there in, a, in the media, social media. Because, because it's not for them. It's not for them. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, you know, Lanisha and I have a super strong understanding and our co-parenting operation is, is so solid. But, you know, if you see me on Mondays, Wednesdays or Fridays, my daughter is right next to me, whether I'm on set, whether uh, we it's just it's just real talk because I got a nursery in my in my office. I'm literally gonna leave here to make sure that I can spend the most time with her. Now, not to, not against all my other kids because all of my other kids they're in school, they're you know they're babies, but that as well as, as Onyx. But the fact that I appreciate that Lanisha gives me the respect enough to allow me to to have her you know, really is as equal amount of time as she does. Well, that was Marina's idea, Nick, to give you that gift. But you know, now that Mother's Mother's Day, Mother's Day just passed, apparently there was a mishap where Nick messed up something with his baby moms. Uh, I'm not trying to start nothing, Nick. This is your words out your mouth. Take a listen. I tried my best. I really Nick. did. But I thought it would be really, really good to, you know, I could buy whatever oh, you know okay you're going a different route this yeah day. to show people how you really feel write it down and i was doing handwritten oh messages messages from the heart i love that yeah mm -hmm. so how'd as, you deliver them so then as i'm writing oh. a handwritten message uh -oh. i get the cards mixed up i knew it i know you was gonna say that i know you was gonna say that I know it. I know he was going to say I that shit. I just got goosebumps. I feel. I knew he was oh going to say no. that shit. <laughs> and then so when one baby mama reads the card about how I feel about the other baby. Wow. wow. See, if I would have just got some generic shit that everybody else got, that wouldn't happen. No, nigga, I, if you would have focused, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Well, we have an idea on how to help you stay focused here. And I'll, uh, let me see, where's it at? Da -da -da -da. No, you. Oh. Tell them we got them a gift. So now we first gave you gift cards, I mean, flashcards for your kids. Now we have flashcards for your baby mamas. First, we have Mariah Carey, Brittany Bell, Abby De La Rosa, Brie, Lanisha Cole. And Alyssa Scott. We know your address, so we'll ship it to you. She did that, not me. But you know, we just were thinking about you, Nick. I it's just a mistake that anybody can make. Not no, really. Not really. No, not really. Okay. All right. Well, listen, bye. All right. Speaking of Mother's Day, uh, this woman right here. Now we're not gonna spend too much time because I really I am so sick of talking about the Kardashians. I can't wait till a day we can do a show and we not talk about them. Uh, I don't know when that day is because as they continue to produce more offspring, we see more and more seasons of the Kardashians coming. By the way, I've been seeing them promote a lot of basic products online and people are saying they must be going broke because they're now just promoting anything. anything. That's anything. crazy. There used to be a day where the Kardashians promoting something was huge and now you can see them promoting Toothpaste. Chick-fil-A. I don't know why I thought Chick-fil-A is just nasty. Mm -hmm. All right, well anyway, um, this is Kim and her kid St. West. Now, Nick Cannon wasn't the only celebrity going viral over Mother's Day. His ex-girlfriend, 
Kim Kardashian also had a little mishap. Now, while she was sharing a cute video message from her children, Kim shared a video of her five-year-old son, Saint, keeping it all the way 100. Now, if y'all don't know, this is Kanye's kid, and Kanye's kid going to do one thing. They going to keep it Kanye. Here is the messages from all the kids, uh, North, Saint, Chicago, and Sam. Look at how sweet Chloe is. She made these for all of us. That was cute. That was cute. But there was an extra part of Saint's video that wasn't included in there. And we want to play the extended clip just for you. Take a look. Mom, I'm very grateful for you. I know I'm rude to you a lot. I say you're nothing to me, but you mean the world to me. I love you more than anything. You're my favorite in the family. I even love you more than my little cute little brother, Sam. I love you. Never forget that. The shade. He left no crumbs. He left no crumbs. He said, what did he say? He said that he likes her even better than his baby. No, brother. no, no, no. That wasn't the shade. Play that video again for those of you that missed the message. It was so much. Mom, I'm very grateful for you. I know I'm rude to you a lot. I say you're nothing to me, but you mean the world to me. He said, I love you a lot, even though I, you, I tell you you're nothing to me. Who says that? Kanye, son. Kanye kid. <laughs> Clearly. Um, your kids are even sick of you. This is crazy that even on Mother's <laughs> Day, your kid is telling you what the whole world is saying. They are sick of you and want you to go away. Damn. Um, but shout out to the kid for being honest. You know, you got to be careful asking kids what they think because then they will tell you. They will. Um, I don't want to spend any more time talking about this uh, because I know all of you watching are like, please, we, we're tired of talking about the Kardashians. But I think he said what everybody feels. He said what he said. Yeah. He meant it. Uh, this weekend, I also saw that Chloe posted a photo of Courtney saying, I know that you guys are mixing us up. You guys look nothing alike mm -mm. at all. Um, mm -mm. I don't know who that shade towards, whether it's shade towards Courtney or shade towards Chloe. But either way, you guys very much look distinctly different. And now that you all have drained the pool of black men, you all are now getting men that are not black. Uh, and then, I don't know, they're also saying that Chloe's back with Tristan. We don't care. I want the whole Kardashian clan to go away. We know that the show is now on Hulu. Have you watched the show? Not one of them. Have you watched the show? No. Have you watched the show? Now, I won't lie. When they were on E, I watched that all the I time because it was same. always on TV. So nobody's really keeping up with y'all anymore. Damn. Yeah, I don't have Hulu, so. And where is Br uh, Caitlyn? If Bad Bunny don't be in there, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Shit. You're going to watch the, the Kardashians the for Bad Bunny? Yeah, that's my guy. He's Spanish. We're in there. Now we in there. <laughs> that's all it takes. Well, yeah. that's and that One goes back peoples. and that goes back to why Chris put that together. I'll, hey. I'll say allegedly. Chris, allegedly. If you're looking to adopt, nah, I, I'm cool. All right. Well, listen, that's it for today's show. Let's get into thoughts and prayers. Now, here's a part of the show where I summarize everything I said during the show and put my little twist on exactly what I think about it so that way it's left with you, the thought of how to act and then the prayers that we all need to get through. Well, my thoughts and prayers are with my hometown of Stockton. As you know, at the top of this show, I showed you the video of the hard work that I'm doing there with the I Am Ready initiative and working in partnership with my mayor and the city leaders. And I want to leave that thought as the last thing here with you on the show so that way you can give us your prayers because this week we're going back home to meet with hundreds of kids kids so we can continue to get them to buy into the idea that they can live out their dreams and end up right here maybe not at this set with this messy conversation with them but maybe wherever their dreams may lie that they can pursue those so i'm going to leave you with the video i played at the top and i want you to watch it and share it share it share it take a look the last city council everybody was supporting it when i say if you vote no you're saying that you're not ready to save the lives of stockton and it's you We came here in September. We pitched the idea of the I Am Ready initiative, and the city at the the city at the time had a different city council, the same mayor, a couple of new people, but everybody in the city wanted to change because you know kids were getting killed in the community, 
we, people don't want to come and do business here. It's a very unsafe space. And so we went and we did the work and we knew that we were going to be met with opposition because there's infighting politically in the city. But nonetheless, we hear the people want it. And now we're going to go meet with a group of people to talk about the meeting tonight where they're going to vote to invest a million dollars into the I'm Ready initiative to show that the city is actually ready to support kids. And to me, if you vote no, that means you're just not ready to support kids. And that's that's a whole other issue. So. You know, part of me as an organizer wants to like use every relationship I have to do it, but I don't understand why it's so hard to help. You know, like right. I'm, I have fully made with her sign on to help. Like I can tip me had all these people, Adidas, Pepsi. And then even with all that, it's still like, you still got to force them to see the vision, you know? And I don't know, what are y'all doing? Like, yeah. Where are you ready for? Come on. Yeah, I'm ready. Bella. What's the name? What's the name? What's the We're going to move to public comments at this time. I'm here on the behalf. I'm ready. This project presented by Mr. Jason Lee will restore Stockton in so many ways. I sheltered my daughter. I she went to school every day, dropped off, picked up, and she was still murdered. Both of you guys told me, if you ever need anything, let me know. I am backing Jason on this. You guys ain't going to make no change. I'm going to do what I got to do and everybody going to do what we got to do and we're going to for sure make the change. When Jason spoke to the children earlier today, he sat with all of the children and several of them don't even know what they want to do when they grow up and they're almost grown. I'm a friend of Jason's. He didn't even know I was coming. I was in North Carolina. I popped up on him just because of his Instagram. I'm a Afro-American pro race car driver. We need these kind of programs to get youth out there to understand a guy like me can be a professional race car driver. My mom told me that mentorship changes lives and can change the way my future looks. I know, like knowing that my future can be happy and successful with Mr. Jason's program. Well, Harry go, because I had a meeting with Harry one time and he said he was going to support the youth. Y'all got a chance. Y'all ain't going to be up there forever. Y'all ain't going to hold them seats forever. One day y'all going to have to pass them on, but five years from now, if y'all approve this, Y'all can say I was a part of that. Now, I wasn't sure when I got here if I was ready or not. I wasn't. We are not going to fight this money. This million dollars needs to go, I think, to um, the I Am Ready. I Am Ready is a cry that our youth are saying, please, city council members, mayor, please, please say that you're ready. We got to either go or y'all got to go because somebody got to make a change. And we're ready to create change because these children, these, this youth in our city, they deserve this. They deserve to know that God has created them to live out their purpose. Take out the politics and stand for our youth. The I Am Ready initiative needs your support. So I hope you all support this initiative. I'm ready. Get ready. I am ready. Are you? My council colleagues for, for comments or questioning. It just doesn't seem fair to me that we would just let one organization, a new organization without, you know, really the track record to just jump over the process. A million dollars without going through the NOFA process when we're putting this other amount for all these various charities. I just don't feel right about that. I don't think it's being fair and competitive. I still really haven't seen a, a, a detailed budget. There's a two-year budget completed that has itemized expenses. The city staff did include that budget with the NOFA and all the supporting documents. What's happening right now is politics at play because the city manager and the mayor's office are on different pages. Why? Because the mayor is standing with kids in this community and the city manager is not. If, if, if I may, if I may, Mayor, I was going to provide some clarification which was very germane to this discussion. I'm the city manager, I have the right to do that. I understand that, yeah. but I'm facilitating this meeting right now, and we're at the portion of the meeting where the council members were, were asking questions. Okay, well, but I'll defer. If you, you talk about Rihanna, you talk about Mayweather, they're great friends with you. Why can they, have they ever done uh, a, a fundraiser for you? Where is your background I mean, on this? Do you have a social, you know, social worker background? I mean, how are you going to help people 
break this down, helping you. I spent 11 years as a staff director with SEIU UHW organizing healthcare workers from radiology technologists to uh, certified nurse assistants to EVS workers and lab assistants. I then worked for a year with the California Nurse Association leading and organizing statewide and national campaigns and lobbying Congress. You talk about my past. I know there was a situation Let's, where, let's, let's. Wait, no, no, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, no. We, we're not. I said. Because oh, I'm being respectful. This, okay. Right here. Right here. Okay. We have a responsibility to the taxpayers. That's end of story. Um, there has to be a NOFA. There has to be a process. Um, there's power in this room right now today, but we're going to need you to bring that power together and, and deliver us a meaningful program design. I'm sorry that I'm getting emotional, but this is an emotional topic. We are talking about our youth in our city, our mayor, our community coming together for the first time to address the need of positive outlets for our youth. So I'm a little bit perplexed when seven months ago, we have this video up here by the council. If this is a process, an initiative, a movement that we can save some, I think that we owe it to ourselves, our young people, our community. And even my own opponent sitting in this own chair was praising you because he didn't have a mentor. Your mentorship thing is what's really getting to me because I didn't have a whole lot of mentorship as a kid. What's changed over the seven months? We need to invest in the health and safety of our children's need over politics. This is not a moment of Superman flying in to save the city. This is an idea of how the city can invest and become a stakeholder in the process where we lead a program that works in collaboration with all these amazing people in the room. All right, and this week at the Jason Lee Show over at Revolt, I'm so excited to show you who our next guest is, and it's the one and only Chloe Bailey. <laughs> woo -woo. Bow, bow, bow. Beautiful Chloe, she came in here stunning, stunning. Now, let me tell you yes. something. One thing I'm going to do is have the conversation that nobody else will have with my guests. And here's a little snippet of what I talked to her about when I asked her what she thought about the conversation she had on Lotto's show. Hey, Lotto, about her boyfriend. Oh, I mean, alleged boyfriend. Take a look. You did Lotto's show. Yes. Lotto's been here on the show. Hey, Lotto, you know, I love you. I, know I you love good. her. I love her. I do. But I also am very critical of celebrities who have talk shows because, you know, some people just, this is what we do. I ain't going to get on stage and sing and twerk. That's not my thing. I do this. Uh, when she asked you about Quavo, mm -hmm. I had already seen the movie trailer of mm -hmm. the movie that you all did together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I own a company where we talk about who's dating who and who ain't dating who. Yeah, and we had yeah, never yeah. talked about you guys dating. or I ain't even heard no rumor of that. Yeah. The reaction you gave was so much grace. Didn't you want to say, what about you and 21 Savage? Well, that's not my business. But your bit, that you and Quavo wasn't hers. But she's my girl. Your girl, your girl is not supposed to set, you didn't feel set up? No. Oh, you're so nice. See, this is why everybody loves you and everybody hates you. You know why I didn't feel set up? Because it's it's about like my answers. Yeah. You choose how you react to things. That's yeah. anything in life. Yeah, no. God, you're so good. Who taught did Yvette do this? Did Yvette teach you how to talk to people? Because that was a great PR. You know, that's what cracks me up. Anytime, like I'll briefly see some comments or things like, oh, wow, her media training is A1. I'm like, no, I'm just a good person. Mm. I really, really enjoyed talking to Chloe. Uh, I love her. Everywhere I see her, uh, it's always love. Uh, make sure you watch that show. We made it. It's always hey, good. Hey. It's always. Oh wait, I feel like Selena. <laughs> Not the Hawaiian. Um, but no, we made it through another episode. Make sure you check it out. We're also streaming everywhere that podcast stream. Make sure you're downloading, 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 streaming, sharing, and making sure you're telling everybody about the show. You can listen to the Jason Lee Show right here on the Jason Lee Podcast every Monday if you download it. And make sure if you want to stay in touch with me, you follow me on all social media, and that you buy the merch because uh, it's available right now. Look. The Gag Nation line is finally here.
So you know when somebody tells me that I can't do something, what am I going to do? I'm going to do it. So I didn't just build my own show, The Jason Lee Show. I built my own merch line, too. Why? Because the Gag Nation, all of you, you're my family. And everything's fire. Trust me. We got sneakers, robes, hoodies, slides, mugs, and a smoker's bundle with trays and grinders for all y'all that do all of that. It's a limited time drop. It's only here one time, so once it's sold out, you're never going to get it again. So head over right now to the website, hollywoodunlock.com slash shop, to secure your spot right now. And if you want to stay in touch with me directly, you can text me right now, 310-388-6463. That's the number. Give it to all your friends. Don't send me no nudes, but if they cute, do that too. All right, until then, we out. Peace. The Jason Lee Podcast.